Geraldine Ferraro once said, it was not so very long ago that people thought that semiconductors were part-time orchestra leaders and microchips were very small snack foods. Keep this in mind as we discuss today the shortage of microchips around the world. My name is Dr. David Wadalu. And my name is Dr. Ross Stewart. And you are watching Geopolitics in Conflict. Ross and I are very excited to announce a new membership for those who are interested in delving deeper into the topics we usually talk about in the video. We will be meeting every two weeks via video call where we can answer some of your most pressing questions. For more information, please check out uh, the link below. We look forward to seeing you there. David. Times have truly changed. There's probably not a person in the United States that doesn't know what a microchip is. And what we're looking at in the world is every human being seems to be impacted in some form or fashion by these microchips. And we're falling on a shortage based on a number of reasons, and it's stopping the progression of technology in some parts of the world. What do you make of all this? Well, that's correct, Russ. I mean, if you think about the usage of microchips from the iPhones we have, to the cars we drive, to the uh, microwaves we have at home, and wa the washer, and <laughs> I don't know all that. I mean, microchips becomes a part of our daily lives. And the issue now with the shortage is creating some tensions to the point that it's becoming a security issue, a geopolitical concern, if you will, among nations who controls the, pro, uh, the, the, the production of microchips. Amazingly, there are only three major producers. One in the United States, one in Korea, and one in Taiwan. No wonder Taiwan is a hotspot. That's correct. Uh, the one you are talking about are uh, Intel from the US, the Samsung from South Korea, and the TMUC, I believe, uh, that has like an unusual name for it. It's TSMC in Taiwan. Now, between the three uh, microchip producers, uh, Intel makes about uh, $73 billion a year uh, revenue, Samsung is about $60 uh, billion, and TM... Taiwan. Taiwan. <laughs> <laughs> it's easier that way. Taiwan makes about $43 billion. This is to the tune of almost a trillion microchips a year. That is correct, and when you break that down even further, it's about 128 chip for every single living human being on Earth. Well, do you think these things are really important? Yeah, <laughs> say that, yeah, you're absolutely correct. Okay, well, thanks to U.S. sanctions now, it looks like China's going to get the short end of this. Well, actually, not the case. Actually, this might work to the China's favor, because now China's going to be moving forward with producing its own. Because remember, just uh, uh, during about six months ago or so, you remember yeah. when the Trump administration imposed sanctions on some Chinese companies? Well, one of them uh, called SMIG, the Semiconducting Microchip International Corporation, which is a Chinese, was banned from purchasing uh, uh, the chips from the U.S. because of its ties to the military. Now, with this shortage now, it's opening our eyes on so many other countries. Among them is China. And China now is thinking in terms of maybe time has come for us to produce our own. Well, recently, the, at the annual uh, Chinese Communist Party Congress, they allocated billions and billions of dollars to this development. Yeah. Well, and it, make more, and it makes perfect sense. If we are to advise uh, the Chinese government or some company in China, uh, this is the right course of action. You do not want to stay dependent on another source of your revenue, and this is of, uh, of the production of, of a microchip. And this is exactly what China is doing with the energy. That's why they're not depending on one source, one supplier. They 
diversification per se. The same concept is going to be applying now with microchips by China producing its own. Now the question is going to be with that, uh, Ross, and for you to know also, is what's going to happen with Taiwan, because Taiwan has one of the key microchips production facilities. No, as I said a minute ago, no wonder it's such a hot spot. Especially now that there's now that people in Taiwan are saying such things as we want to be our own private and separate nation. Just adding fuel to an already roaring flame. Yeah, and and then usually they have been an argument. Well, is China's uh, sort of decision to take Taiwan by force has to do with microchips? Uh, it might not be the case because historically speaking, uh, China wants to bring Taiwan back to the mainland peacefully. You know, of course they are not going to tolerate, nor will they allow uh, any other uh, foreign entity to dictate what goes on with Taiwan, because Taiwan is part of China, one nation, two party systems. So, well, what do you think that that the people here watching this should pay most attention to with this? Well, what they're going to notice is that uh, the, the economy is going to have somehow be impacted one way or another. So if you are now, you, uh, uh, the consumers, you, the, uh, uh, the buyers, if thinking of buying some, like, let's say, uh, electric car, mm -hmm. <laughs> it might not be there because of the shortage, shortage of, of microchips. Yeah. If you want to buy certain appliances, you might see the prices up because the issue of supply and demand, but also because chips and not your average product. They are very complex in producing, and it requires a lot of funding. It's, it's not a small matter. This is why you only have the three major microchips producers, Intel, Samsung, and the, the one in Taiwan. So, so well, basically what it will be is that you're gonna notice some changes within the, the global economy pertaining to this, because here is the key. Here is what you need to know, is that whoever controls the production of microchips controls global economy. It's almost like, and I will not sugarcoat it by saying it the way it is, it's almost like microchips is going to become the next, uh, um, what we call it, technical oil. <laughs> <laughs> it's oil of sort. Well, oh, here's a conclusion. We're seeing sanctions, sanctions, followed by more sanctions. And what it's doing is pushing people to take sides. Instead of cooperation, what we're seeing is fierce competition and animosity. In China, one of the things that they've had to cope with is fierce competition for thousands of years. And they've developed a saying in, in, in Mandarin that goes, we can make it a win-win where everybody profits. Well, thanks to sanctions, we're not seeing much of that. Yeah, that's correct, and it will make perfect sense if all countries cooperate regarding this, because we all can benefit from it. Exactly. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other videos. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. And as always, stay informed. Till next time. Bye-bye.